Hello, my name's Joe, and what we're going to be looking at in our little Houdini adventure is how to do some simple scattering um, of meshes in Houdini. If you found this helpful, please like, subscribe, and hit that bell for more videos. And don't forget to check out my website, 3dassetlibrary.com, for Unreal and Unity Engine assets. So, basically, what I'm doing currently at the moment is that in previous tutorials, I've been like working on a how to make a bridge or how to make a uh, a fence and things like that. Um, what I'm doing at the moment is I'm just figuring out things of how to uh, for uh, uh, my next sort of few uh, clumps of videos. Um, but what I thought I'd do is I'll show you some of the things that I've personally learned. Obviously, if you in, in you know you know Houdini things like that, this is not useful for you. Um, so, you know don't don't expect anything amazing but for those that don't this is you know it, it can be very handy to get people started so what we're going to look at is how to scatter um just some simple cubes and it's going to add a sort of a scale randomization to the cube and also a um, rotation randomization um, to a cube obviously this would be great for say scattering rocks or even things like trees and whatnot um, across a grid um so what we'll do is we will right click geo give it a name scatter open up the geo and we'll create right click type grid and this is our grid so what this will be useful this is we were going to scatter our points inside this grid um, so that um, we know that we we can kind of control this if uh, you know we need to obviously I'd, I'd assume you could do all things like a curve and things like that but I thought uh, using a grid would make more sense say if you were to drop it into Unreal Engine you know that you know you could size it to a 20 by 20 grid and everything's scattered inside of that grid and it's not going to leak out and things like that so obviously by default this is all uniform everything's a perfect square um, we don't want that we want to have some variation within this um, so that you know it doesn't all you know we don't know we know that a rock isn't going to appear every single little square across here we want it to be randomized so what we'll do is we'll just go to our click on our grid set the size to two oh no what well, sorry we'll leave that at 10 we'll set the rows to two and the columns to two so we've just got a blank square here now we'll drag off the grid and right tab scatter and you'll see that this is going to scatter loads of points. So if we turn on our points here, um, you can see them a little bit better here. So it's, you can see this being scattered all over here. And I'll just turn those back off. Um, so what this is doing is, as you can see here, all the points, they're never going outside of this grid. And if we resize this grid, no matter what shape, they're always staying within what, what we decide, what our grid size is. And then what we've got here is our uh, maximum points. So we can scroll this down. Oh, sorry, wrong one. Our force count here we can scroll this down so we've got less points or we can scroll this right up so we've got more dense points so what we'll do is we will uh, just leave it at the default for the minute so now what we need to do is we want to scatter some uh, geometry on this so we're going to use a cube for this as I say this could be any geometry um, trees whatever um, this is as I say this is something I've been trying to work out how to do for later um, little uh, tutorial clumps that I'm doing, not tutorial, but learning clumps I'm doing. So what we'll do is we'll right click cube and type, uh, sorry, yeah, right click, type cube, get there in a minute. And I'm just going to set this to a polygon mesh and uh, set that to two, two, two. And what I'm then going to do is just set this scale down to 0.1 because otherwise it's going to be huge. And what we'll then do is go right click copy to and then select copy to points. We'll plug our points in and we'll plug our box in. So as you can see here, we've got our boxes here. And um, what we'll do is we'll just make this a little bit bigger um, so that we can, you know, this see here. You can see here it's missed out a clump here. So that means that our scattering is, is working as it should be. Um, so you can see that it's getting denser and denser and denser or, or, you know, less and less and less. So what we'll do now is that we've done that, um, but obviously everything looks spot on. Now that might be ideal for, you know, if you're doing like a computer world where everything would be, you know, essentially dupe perfect you know it'd be you know, it's a sort of artificial intelligence type thing but you you know you don't need that randomization but we want to obviously try and make things a little bit more natural um so what we'll do first is we'll adjust the scale so we'll drag off of the scatter here type uh, hit tab and type uh, randomize and we'll just click on this and name it scale uh, rand scale so we know that it's a random scale and you can see here this randomized color so straight away you've got an option there that if you wanted to apply different colors to this um, 
you know, to give it, give it more variation. So say, for instance, we're using rocks. Obviously, you wouldn't want your rock to be identical in color um, throughout. So you could apply, you know, three or four different textures here. I think if you drop this down here, yeah, it just gives you less and less textures. So, um, you know, that's great in itself. Um, but we want to use this for scale. So what we'll do is we'll click on our RAND scale here. And we want to make sure that the points are selected and type in here, all lowercase, P scale. So this is saying, uh, uh, from what I understand, point scale. So you can see here straight away that it's um, adjusted this. What we'll do is we'll go to the dimensions here, just drag this down because it's only we're only scaling in sort of one direction, uh, one uh, uniform amount, sorry. And we can set the min and maximum of values here. So we can say, well, we want the, the biggest to be two and the smallest to be uh, zero. Obviously, we don't want that. So we, we, we want them to always appear. So we'll put 0 0.1. And um, so you can see here we've got some randomization we can adjust i believe is it this the overall uh amount all in one go um and we can go back to our scatter here and we can adjust as you can see here as, as we're moving through it's just scattering these as and when we need them um, Um, we've also got inside the scatter the seed, so we can drag the seed, and this just randomizes it. You know, um, so if you're happy with um, the amount of points and things like that, but you know you you didn't want them to appear like this, you just you can drag this and scatter them, uh, scatter them across, and you can see here it's just chucking them about a bit. Now the next thing we want to do is randomize the rotation. Um, so what we'll do here is we will drag off of this and type a wrangle. That's what W R A N and attribute wrangle and we're just going to slide that in and plug it in and so what we need to do is write a tiny little bit of snippet of code here that's basically going to uh, allow us to change the orientation of our objects manually this is going to uh, sorry objects this is going to do it automatically and then we're going to have an option uh, using the actor group at randomize afterwards to basically allow us to have a little bit of control over the rotation so what we need to do is type in at orient space equals space rand and then open bracket at point num close bracket and then end it with i don't know what they're called um the the dot on the uh, comma underneath i've got what they're called and um so when we click in our network view you'll see here that it's randomized our rotation and now with uh, w this is a, a little bit of vex from what i understand um I haven't gone too far into coding at the moment, but f with code, like I've, I've previously done coding for a long time in things like websites, like it's logical if you break it down. Sometimes it's, but you know, when you look at stuff, you can say, you you can look at this and go, well, it doesn't make sense. But quite often it does. It's you know, from how how I understand it, I could be completely wrong, but how I understand it is that it's basically saying, randomize each point numbers orientation, and. Um, or get the orientation and randomize the point numbers. Um, so, you know, but I, I, I read it as it's randomizing the point number, um, point numbers orientation. So, as I say, with code generally, it can be daunting, but, um, you know, it's... Um, it's it can, it's logical when you try and break it down. Sometimes you get things like that. There was one uh, uh, little bit of X that came across, which was dihedral, and, you know for me that made no sense but you know sometimes you come across things like that um so what then we'll do is we'll drag off of the wrangle here and we'll type randomize and we're just going to slide that into our thing so again we've got our randomized colors and what we're going to do is basically we're going to type this name in to be able to control it in our randomize so in the, the attribute name orient and uh we now got the ability i hope to randomize our, so I'm just using the global scale here currently just to randomize that. But what we can do down here is we can set how much we want it to randomize. So we can say minus 90, 90, and you know, copy those, copy those, because obviously we're going in three, uh, three axes. So that's basically saying it will go, from, uh, from what I understand, 90 degrees in the negative and 90 degrees in the positive in on all directions and um you know if you if you only want it in one direction you can say well zero these all out and um, you can say well i only want it to go 90 degrees in this direction 
and you can see there that it's not it's not changing any other direction but it's adding a little bit of you know uh, turning here uh, by the looks of it it's not moving 90 degrees so I don't know quite what the values are here um, so let's try 180 um, and 180 uh, I wonder if it's just it could be that I'm just being a little bit aggressive with it and um, yeah there so ignore what I said about the 90 degrees this and the other it seems to be that that doesn't apply I'm, I'm sure there is a way to set that but you can see here that you know is that's added more variation and we can then just uh, say well we want the same in that five and the same in that five and you can see here as I say this is all randomized so we can then go back to our um, scatter here and we can say, well, we want less of this. And as we're dragging down the amount of points, um, we're still getting our randomization here. Um, in our, obviously, uh, our uh, scatter again, we can go to our seed and say, well, no, we want that seed. And, um, you know, we've got uh, the seed for the scale here as well. So if you go to, say, click on scale options, and you've got seed in here that's just randomizing our scale a little bit for us so that we can check to we can find a seed that we like and it got exactly the same for the uh randomizing of the uh rotation so we click on the randomize options exactly the same here and you can see it's rotating these to you know think oh what we want that one and it's good so yeah hopefully that's helped so what we say what we've got here is we've had a um our little cube this could be any geometry you want you you know whatever you you want we then created a grid and we then scattered points in this grid that don't, basically don't go outside of the edge of the grid we've then randomized the scale of each point we've then um automatically orientated randomly orientated each point we've then added a uh, attribute randomize that allows us to control the orientation uh, more and then we've copied these cube to those points to create our little scatter here hopefully that's helped if it has please do like and subscribe and hit that bell